All right, so we're finishing up um, further proofs. All right, so one more to do before we finish the topic. All right, so we need to find the exact value of root 5 plus 2 or to the power of 4 plus root 5 take away 2 or to the power of 4. All right, so we've got binomial, so we've got two terms in there, so we've got expansion, so we're going to use our um, binomial expansion, um, expansion there. So, we're going to do the sum of these. What I'm going to do is write them separately. So, root 5 plus 2 to the power of 4. Okay, now what are the coefficients for the combination for a power of 4 expansion? You're thinking about Pascal's triangle. No, too far. That's the uh, power of 6, what you just told me. How many terms are we expecting? N plus 1. All right, so 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Remember, we've got symmetry of that triangle. Okay, so if you can remember those sort of things, instead of writing um, NC0, NC1, and so forth, we can just write those results down. Okay, otherwise, you've got your NC whatever. All right, so I know, um, I know the coefficient of 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 because it's um, a more, a lower number for N. Okay. So, we have 1 times this first term to the highest power. Now, I'm going to write the root as a fraction index. So, the root 5 becomes um, 5 to the half, okay, and applied to the highest power. Okay, and then this second term is to the power of the lowest power, which is going to be 0. Okay, plus 4, lots of 5 to the half to the power of 3, so we decrease the left term, going from left to right, the power of the left term, and we increase the power of the right term, going left to right. And the reason why I've written the index, we can use our power to power rules, alright, to be able to simplify our expression. Now, just a bit of notation, if you need to continue a sum in the next line of your page because you can't fit it across, okay, um, I wouldn't do it right here, all right, because you don't want to confuse sums and equal signs, okay, so I'd actually indent it, uh, one, just to, just to make it easy to flow, and then when you're going back checking your work, for example, it's much easier to sort of recognise quickly what you're doing, as opposed to putting here when you're expecting the equal signs, okay, so that's just sort of things you need to start thinking. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, so 5 to the half, 4 to the power of 0, and then 2 to the power of 4. <coughs> Alright, so we've got 5 to the power of a half, or to the power of 4, so using index laws, multiply them two together, becomes 5 to the power of 2, 25. Alright, so we've got 4 times 2, and then this is going to be 5 root 5. So you've got root 5 times root 5 times root 5. Yep, okay, so it'll be 4 times 2, which is 8, 8 times 5, which is 40. Okay, we're finding the exact value, so we need to leave it as thirds in simplified form. Alright, 5 to the half all squared is 5, times 6 which is 30, times 2 squared times 4, 30 times 4 is 120. Okay, so 5 to the half to the power of 1 becomes root 5, and then we've got 4 times 2 to the power of 3. So 4 times 8 which is 32, root 5. And the last term, this all goes to zero. So then we've got four to the power, so two to the power of four, two, four, eight, fifteen. Okay, so we've got twenty-five plus one hundred and twenty plus sixteen. Okay, sum of that one hundred and sixty-one plus seventy-two root five. So adding the like terms using your third laws. 
All right. Root 5, take away 2 to the power of 4. Now, do you guys need to do the full expansion? No. Okay, so you're recognising pattern, and from the recognising pattern, you should be able to write at least the second last line or the last line straight away with your change because of the change of what's inside those brackets. So what's the change going to be? Mm -hmm. So where does the minus start? Here or here? So this will be positive because the first term is always uh, going to be positive, okay, because the minus term is associated with the second, and that will be to the power of zero first up, okay. So that means each second term, and nicely it worked out for us, the second terms are the thirds, okay, and the other terms are whole numbers, okay, so, which are positive. So what is my answer going to be in relation to this line here? Technically not the conjugate, but I like where you're thinking. Because it's where conjugates are specifically relating to complex numbers. Uh, yeah, more so. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yep. Yeah. I see your point. Very good. Alright, so therefore, root 5 plus 2, or to power 4, plus root 5. Take away 2, or to power 4, that's the question, what it asked us to do, do that. Okay, which much is that plus that? Okay, which is going to be 2 lots of 161. So, 322. So it worked out to be the exact value for us. Right, so that's part I. Now, I think in your notes it says, hence proves, so you'll cross that out because that's what the second part of the question is. So, hence find the value of the integer n, such that n is less than five, root 5 plus 2 to the power of 4, which is less than n plus 1. So, in other words, we need to find the integer value n that root 5 plus 2 to the power of 4 lies between. Okay? So, at this point, I'll probably go into your calculator. I would put in root 5 plus 2 or to the power of 4 and tell me what you get. Okay, so which two integers does this lie between then? So 321.99, something like that? 321 and 322. Okay, so we need to show that n equals 321. Because n plus 1 is 322. Yes? Okay, so how do we do it? Alright, root 5. What two whole numbers does that lie between? Two and three. Okay. So two, which is less than root five, which is less than three. Okay. Now what I'm going to do each of those terms, I'm going to subtract two. Okay. So zero is less than root five take away two, which is less than one. Because I've got this involved more question as well. Okay. So, then I'm going to have each of those three turn to the power of four. Alright, so zero, which is less than root five take away two, which is less than to the power of four, which is less than one to the power of four, which is just one. Okay, so if root 5 between 2 and 3, 
and then I'll take away 2 from each of those three terms, therefore root 5 take away 2 must be between 0 and 1, and then if I put everything to the power of 4, root 5 take away 2 or to the power of 4 must be between 0 and 1. Hey? Root 5 take away 2, not root 5 plus oh, 2. Okay. So root 5 take away 2, which is between 0 and 1, so therefore root 5 take away 2 or to the power of 4 is between 0 and 1. Okay? So when I add this value up here, it is less than 1. When I add it to root 5 plus 2 or to the power of 4, it is less than 1. The total is 322. So in other words, if I take away this on both sides, I'm going to have root 5 plus 2 or to the power of 4, which is going to be greater than 321 because I'll take a number away that's less than 1, is going to equal 320, uh, above 321, but still less than 322. Okay, so therefore, n um, is going to be 321. which implies that 321 is less than root 5 plus 2 to the power of 4, which is less than the next integer. In other words, root 5 plus 2 or to the power of 4 lies between 321 and 322. We are done. <laughs>